Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to a special holiday edition of No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com and the YouTube channel and a brand new affiliate for NoDQ.com where you can also watch No DQ and A video, ringsidenews.com. So check them out. I am now in the full holiday spirit here, complete with a Santa hat that's too big for my head. Kind of looks like an old Russian hat. But anyways, got a lot of questions here from spring.me slash Aaron Rift. And even though it's the holiday season, I still have to answer these questions. So let's get started here with the first one from Drizzle44. As usual around this time of year, Sting's TNA contract is expiring soon. So somebody's got to ask it. What are the chances we're finally going to get Sting in WWE and face The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30? And if we do see it, can the match live up to the hype? You're right. Every year around this time, the rumors start up regarding Sting. I think that the chances are better this year than previous years because of the fact that TNA is having their financial issues and their cutbacks. And it's still a big question mark at this point if they are going to offer Sting the kind of money that he's been making the past seven or eight years. So from Sting's point of view, it might be time to finally take the WWE deal, make the big money, go in the Hall of Fame and have one final match and then cash out, uh, retire happily, uh, knowing you ended your career on a high note. So it's definitely a possibility. And I think that myself, along with most people, would love to see Sting finish up his career in WWE. And I think that the timing is right. I think now is the time. I think that he should make the move. And uh, he's not going to have that many more opportunities. You know, he's he's getting up there. And um, WrestleMania 30, it's a milestone event. So, you know, I, I, I just think it's the right time for him to do it. But, you know, time will tell. If TNA makes him a great offer, he might just stick around in TNA and keep doing what he's doing. All right, this next one comes from Captain Heisenberg. Hey, Aaron, since it's pretty obvious for Antonio Cesaro to turn face at some point, when do you think is the best time to do it? And should he still be with Jack Swagger and Zeb Coulter? Keep up the great work. Cheers from Australia. It definitely seems like at some point Antonio Cesaro will make a great baby face in WWE. He continues to get a big reaction every week when he does this giant swing. And like guys such as Daniel Bryan and CM Punk, I think a lot of people have respect for Antonio Cesaro, you know, the strength and how good he is in the ring. So I, I think it's just natural that people will continue to cheer him more and more as time goes on. Now, when do you turn him babyface? I definitely think you need to wait on that a little bit longer because with WrestleMania season coming up, WWE is going to be focusing on the major storylines with John Cena and Randy Orton and whatnot. So if Cesaro was to turn around WrestleMania it's going to get lost in the shuffle. I think it's best to wait it out, uh, maybe have him win Money in the Bank, and then at that point, Jack Swagger and Zeb Coulter can turn on him. And, um, you know, maybe you could have Antonio Cesaro be one of those guys that actually announces in advance when he's going to cash in Money in the Bank, and that would make him a babyface. So I think that that would be the best way to go with him sometime around the summer when you can make it a focal point on television. All right, this one comes from MVTR20. Hey, Aaron, do you think WWE will ever do a pay-per-view in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, like WCW did back in the day? Please answer in video. Thanks, Marshall from Iowa. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I think it's unlikely that WWE will do major pay-per-view events in Cedar Rapids or Iowa, period. I think that you'll be lucky if WWE does an occasional Raw, SmackDown, or House show if you're lucky. Um, the fact is, Vince McMahon and WWE like to run um, in the major cities, especially when it's a big event because it makes the event seem like a bigger deal. And when WWE does run in smaller markets, they tend to not even mention the city that, that they're in because they feel it, it, it makes the show second rate when it's, when it's in a smaller city. And, uh, you know, that's just their mentality on it, and um, I, I, I think it's unlikely. You know, WCW used to run in smaller markets and did pay-per-views, but, you know, that's not how WWE operates. All right, this one comes from Wrong Head. Steve, Steve Austin mentioned in his podcast about how matches used to be more methodical in storytelling, though these days it seems to be more fast-paced. 
Do you think that this has happened because of WWE or because current fans have a shorter attention span? I think a lot of it just has to do with WWE and how everything is more heavily scripted now than it used to be. You know, you look at some of the scripts for Raw and literally down to the minute, everything is scripted and pre-planned. And there's not much room for guys to go out there and um, improvise and be able to tell their story. They just have to go out there and follow the script regarding uh, whatever the, the storyline is. And, uh, you know, that's just how the business has changed and how WWE has changed the way they do things, which is really unfortunate because I definitely liked the older style where guys can go out there and they have more creative control over what they do in the ring and they have more control over their characters and the promos and all that. And now, you know, it's just very robotic. And, uh, you know, that that's how WWE is running their business right now, you know, having everything planned out right down to the last minute. And I, I really do feel that it's overkill and it, 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 it makes for a less entertaining show, in my opinion, and certainly a less creative show. All right, this one comes from Eric Rowan. Hey, Aaron, love the show. If Brock Lesnar didn't leave after WrestleMania 20, would John Cena be the face of the company like he is today? I get this question quite often, actually, and I guess I'll answer it here, but hopefully I don't get this question anymore uh, because I'm not a big fan of the what-if questions. Um, I don't think that Brock Lesnar had anything to do with what WWE was planning to do with John Cena. John Cena was already on his way to being a major star in the company. Uh, maybe Brock Lesnar leaving sped it up a little bit, but you know, after WrestleMania, um, they started pushing JBL. So I think that if anything, JBL benefited the most from Brock Lesnar leaving the company. But yeah, John Cena was a guy that was already being groomed to be a top star. So it didn't matter that Brock Lesnar left the company, honestly. All right, this one comes from IVIUS Cat. Hey, Aaron from Australia. I was wondering what were your favorite superstar documentaries and DVDs? I just finished a CM Punk one and thought it was great. Long time fan. I've been subscribed since Talk Wrestling 15. Keep up the great work. Well, that's a long time. That's something like, what, five, six years now? Um, so thank you for sticking around and putting up with all the BS. <laughs> Anyways, for your question here. I would have to say my all-time favorite documentaries would have to be um, The Rise and Fall of ECW. That was one of my favorites. Uh, Jake the Snake Roberts, Pick Your Poison. Um, any of the Steve Austin ones, because Austin was always very straightforward. And, um, you know, I, I felt that he was very sincere in the documentaries. And same thing with Mick Foley. Mick Foley's documentaries I thought were very thorough. And, uh, you know, he just, he just told his story and, and, you know, didn't pull any punches. Um, so, you know, those, those would be my favorite ones, definitely. All right, that'll wrap it up for this holiday edition of No DQ and a Video. Thank you for checking out the video today. And um, make sure you check out the NoDQ.com Year End Awards. Vote if you haven't already. Check out the videos I did with Jeff Meacham. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, before I go here, I got one more question from Chris Joshua 10 Hey, Aaron, with WrestleMania not too long away, would it be possible to see Edge making a surprise visit and getting in the mix of the WWE Championship or helping of the younger talent make a name for themselves, like Tyson Kidd as both being from Canada? I could definitely see for WrestleMania 30, Edge making a cameo appearance. I think a lot of fans would enjoy that. At this point, I haven't heard anything about him being there, and... I don't think that he'll make any kind of significant um, impact at WrestleMania. I think that if he does show up, it'll be a small appearance. Um, but yeah, it would be cool to see him come out and maybe uh, manage for one night somebody like Tyson Kidd. Although, you know, Tyson Kidd being in a WrestleMania match, I think, is a long shot, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. But yeah, that would be something cool to, to have Edge come out there and endorse one of the young up-and-coming superstars but you know i don't know if that's going to happen or not seems to me like uh the, the odds are against it happening but we'll see um so with that being said i'll see you guys next time for no dq a video and have a happy holiday oh and one more thing real quick before i go check out my wrestling christmas video from 1991 i'll post it as an annotation on this video so you can just click the link and check it out that way you can laugh at me and I can be embarrassed by it, but 
it's a fun little look back in history. I got some interesting wrestling gifts for Christmas, including figures, magazines, and wrestling buddies. So check that out, and I'll see you guys next time for more Nodi Q&A video.